I'm going to go ahead and begin with a joke. It takes a little bit of explaining before I get to the punchline, but I promise it's funny. Please don't hesitate to laugh or else this will get really awkward. <laughs> what do the Starbucks barista that made my drink yesterday and a substitute teacher that I had in 11th grade biology class have in common? One day, both of these people got up out of bed. They drove to work thinking it was going to be a normal work day, but they both faced the same challenge. They both looked down at the same cryptic, confusing combination of characters. H-A-Y-K. Is it Hawk, said my substitute teacher. Everyone in my class laughed and teased me for the rest of the day. Is it Hake, said the Starbucks barista. Hake, 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 Hake. She started yelling Hake until everyone in the cafe started pulling their headphones out. Wondering why she was yelling. It's hike, I said. Hi to you as well, but I'm looking for someone named Hayek. His Americano is ready. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I've mispronounced a fair share of names in my lifetime. But today, let's consider an all-important question first posed by Shakespeare's Juliet. What's in a name? Today, we'll analyze the origin of my cultural name and some others. Then we'll look to see what makes some names so memorable. Then we'll analyze the implications of labeling our lifestyles with anything but our given name. And finally, I'll name off some solutions. How you can break the barriers of your life every day. Hike is my given name. It's my full first name. It's the name that my father gave me. My mom got to name my sister. We're a very fair family, clearly. It's actually an Armenian name. In Armenia, we also have some pretty unique last names as well. In Armenia, all of our last names end in Yan, which translates into English letters with an I-A-N or a Y-A-N, and altogether it means son of. That's not unlike how Swedish last names also end in son, as in Johansson, Anderson, or Carlson. A naming tradition in Ghana somewhere I traveled to earlier this summer with an organization called Global Brigades, concerns first names. In Ghana, whenever you meet someone, it's typical to share the day of the week you were born on, which also, considering the fact that I was a man, led me to have the first name Kweku. Everywhere I went, they called me Kweku Hike. And these are some of the other Fonty day names where it's typical to introduce yourself with. They each have a certain character to them. They have something that concern the soul or character of the person that holds them, almost like a horoscope in our culture. Next, some of our names are inherently memorable. We remember them because sometimes they're very lengthy, like this man's. Esteban, Julio, Ricardo, De La Rosa, Ramirez, Montoya. But others of us, we don't have as long as names, and we have to make a name for ourselves. That's what these men did. This is Thomas Hobbes and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. They actually tried to put a name on humanity. It was Hobbes' theory that we humans are naturally evil, and society brings us up. It keeps us in check. A hundred years later, Rousseau argued quite the opposite. He said that we, as humans, are inherently good, and we're brought down by the chains of civilization. Now, there is reasons to support both of these men's theories, but I would argue that our lives are so complex that they don't necessarily fit under this label of good or bad. I mean, just think about it. Think about all the people that you see in a day, all the things that you do, all the conversations that you have. It wouldn't perfectly fit under this label of good or bad. So that might raise a red flag to what these philosophers propose to us. But Altogether, I feel like there's a way we could see that there's so much more to our lives. I'm going to pose to you a simple question. I want you to think of the answer to yourself. What do you do? Now, some of you are thinking, maybe I'm a student, or I'm a teacher, or I'm a doctor. But when did our professions begin to dictate our personalities? When did the question, what do you do, turn into the question, what do you do for a living? 
That's the harm that I see in the way that we've been labeling our lifestyles. We've been professionalizing our personalities. That's perhaps why author Para Milan says in her book, From Work Ethic to Workaholicism, that our work days have lost a lot of their value. That so many of us find ourselves so trapped in our work days, in our work routines, in our work schedules, in our school schedules. We tend to live monotonous lifestyles, doing the same repetitive tasks every day. But we can see that we can break that cycle. We can break that monotonous cycle in two main ways. But first, let's look at someone who does break that cycle every day. This man. His name is LeBron James. But it'd be a great disservice for me to introduce him to you as merely an athlete or as just as one of the best basketball players in the world because he does so much more for the world off the court that it's easy for us to forget his work as a philanthropist, as an activist, as someone who's a great father, someone who's a great role model, someone who has so much more to his life than just his profession. So how do we stop that? How do we break down these barriers? There's two main ways. First, you have to get your name out there. You have to have more conversations. I think that it's important for us to meet more people, to have more conversations, to introduce ourselves. Talk about things that are general events. Ask someone if they watched the World Cup this year. Ask someone what they're doing for the rest of summer. Because the more conversations we have, the more opportunities we have to share the subtleties of our lives that make our lives so much more dynamic than just our work days. Now, some people will say, hike, man, I'm just not like you. I can't put my, words in, my, my thoughts into words like you do. I just can't do it. To those people, I'll say, have you ever even tried? To those people, I'll say that from six years of competitive public speaking experience, there's nothing that I've learned best but the fact that you don't need a suit and you don't need a stage, all you need is a message. And sometimes these messages, the loudest messages can be conveyed without even saying a single word. Get creative, create something, produce something, draw a picture, paint a picture, write a song, write an episode for a funny TV show. Put something that's worth, make something that's worth putting your name on because that's what will give value to your work days. That is what will give you a name. Now, I learned this from my grandfather. He actually painted this picture of me that I posed for when I was just seven years old. He was an actor, he was a chess player, he was an artist, but above all else, he was an excellent human being. Altogether, I'm gonna leave you with the words of Barack Obama. He says that your voice matters. You all have a message. If your voice has the power to change a room, then your voice can change a city. If it could change a city, it could change a state. If it could change a state, it can change a nation. And if it can change a nation, it can change the world. So what's in a name? Culture, conversations, and creativity. Thank you.